in order to understand uh, geomorphology, it's very important um, that you understand the concepts, okay, the basics, okay? Now, let's say you live in this area, okay, or this village, okay? It's a little settlement. Um, you have your family, you have other community members, right? Now, putting that into perspective, um, you live in this area, okay? So this area has a river, okay? So it has a river, and this river empties out onto the sea, okay, as you can see. Now, this area, okay, so if you really uh, take a look at this area, so this area is basic, uh, basically has a river, okay? So it has this river, as you can see, and um, this river, has the main river channel okay so it's made up of a main river channel okay so that's the main river channel and the smaller channels uh which basically match into the bigger uh main channel okay so the smaller channels um we call that tributaries okay so these are tributaries okay so let's write that down okay so we have tributaries so these are tributaries okay so these are the uh smaller um smaller channels that match into the big main channel okay so tributaries and this is the main channel okay right now we call this okay so we have a term for basically the main channel and its tributaries okay so it's basically a system okay so the term that we use for the main channel and these tributaries is river system, okay? So this is basically a river system, okay? So this area is basically covered by a river system, okay? So, okay, so the main channel and these tributaries, we call that a river system, okay? And we're saying that this area, okay, where you live, okay, that area is covered by this river system, okay? And the area that is covered by this river system, we call that a drainage basin, okay? So a drainage basin, it's nothing much. It's an area uh, that basically has a, a, a river system or is covered or drained by a river system, okay? So now, so you're saying that this entire area is a drainage basin. Now, of course, a river system um, has a collection point, okay? It has a point where um, it basically has a source of its water, okay? What feeds it um, is that collection area, okay? So that collection area, of course, um, it receives a lot of water from this collection area, okay? Um, and I, I used this color um, yellow to indicate high-lying areas, okay? So these are mountainous areas, high-lying areas, okay? Areas with um, high altitude, okay? So we're saying that this area collects rain and feeds onto this river system. So it keeps on going, okay? Now, this area also has a term, okay? So we say that this area is what we call a catchment area so it collects it catches water so it collects the rain and it feeds um the river system so this is what we call the catchment area okay so catchment area is basically a collection this is where we see a collection of water and um, which feeds onto the river system okay now, within this river system, we also have um, some terms that we use, okay, for some parts of the river, okay? So, as you can see, in this particular area right over here, you have basically, um, you have a, a, a tributary which splits into two smaller tributaries, okay? But in this particular area, you have two river channels meeting up okay um or you have a this is a junction 
of two streams or, or two river channels okay so uh, where two river channels meet okay that we call a confluence okay so we say that it is a confluence okay where you have two rivers meeting okay so we call this part a confluence okay um let's make that smaller okay so that's what we call a confluence okay this is where basically where two river channels meet or two streams meet even here okay that is a confluence as well okay this is a confluence because you have uh, the main river here and a tributary meeting so that's a confluence as well okay um of course you have um where a river you have this area this is basically a place where a river begins okay so uh, we say that say that the a river begins here this particular area and this area we call the source of the river okay so this is what we call the source um of a river let's make that larger okay so that's the source of the river okay so this is basically where the area uh, the river begins and where the river empties onto the sea okay um so let me rather do that um so we have a name for that as well so we call that the mouth the river mouth so we call that the river mouth or you can just say it's a mouth okay right so this is basically where the river ends or empties on to the sea okay now um i need you to listen to me carefully um, on these um on what i'm about to say now so this is a flat plane okay this is basically the flat area just uh adjacent or next to um the river system okay this is basically prone of flooding right now also within this river system we have a high lying area okay we have this high lying area which basically separates two tributaries okay you have a high lying area that is separating two tributaries in this drainage basin and this area is between two river channels okay now uh, we use the word inter okay uh, to 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 say between and because we are talking about a fluvial system a river system and so we say that we call this area an interfluv okay it's a high lying area uh, that is actually uh oh, that separates uh two um, uh, um tributaries okay so we call this an interfluv uh, it's within this one um drainage basin okay so it's within this one drainage basin so if you look carefully to your right the right hand side of this area as you can see we have another area that is drained or covered by a different river system so we have a different river system okay um so this is a different area covered by a different river system okay so what do we call this area that is covered by a river system we also call it a drainage basin okay but it's a different drainage basin okay uh so let's just call it drainage basin two okay so this is drainage uh basin two okay this is another drainage basin okay because this is another area covered by a different uh river system so these river systems uh do not match they do not uh form one um or, or one long uh river system okay so they do not have a relationship between them and so that's why this has to be a different drainage basin this has to be a different area covered by a different river system as you can see okay so we have uh basically two drainage basins here so we have uh drainage basin number one okay on the left hand side we have drainage basin number two on the right hand side okay and what are they separated by okay they are separated by this high lying area okay and this high lying area as well has a word um and so we call that a water shed okay so it's basically a high lying area separating two different drainage basins okay so this is um a, a watershed okay so 
uh, it's very important not to confuse a watershed and an interfluv. Now, an interfluv, as you said, it's within one drainage basin. Okay. Okay. Whereas a watershed is between, okay, both of them are high lying areas, but one separates two tributaries, the other separates two um, drainage basins. Okay. So be very careful um, not to confuse a watershed and an interflow. So this is a different catchment area, different main channel, different river system. Okay. But they all empty out. This river all empties out on to the sea. Okay. Now, um, let's just look at, okay. So this is basically all uh, there is to uh, the concepts like the, the, um, the first few concepts of geomorphology. Um, and so let's basically look at other, um, other flows. So let's look at how water flows within uh or, 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 or within um uh, sorry about that um how does water flow on the soil okay what happens there now we're looking at this from the side okay so we're looking at it from the side basically um we're looking at how does when it rains what happens um how is is water absorbed is water flowing on the surface? Um, is it flowing laterally? Is it flowing vertically? What's happening there? Okay, so because we have uh, a few concepts that address that. Okay. Now, um, now when water, when you have a rain, so let's say you have a rain. Okay, so it's raining. Okay. So if it rains, um and the water seeps through okay so it seeps through the soil so this is the soil so it seeps through the soil or is soaked um, by the soil okay or it filters into the soil that we call we have a name for that okay so we say that the water is um is infiltrated or has infiltrated so we say that this process is infiltration so this is when water soaks um, or filters into the soil, okay? This is one way, um, basically, that water interacts with the soil. So it's either um, it's going to filter um, into the soil, okay, or, you know, get absorbed um, by the soil, okay, or it's it flows on top of the soil okay so or it flows on top of the soil so um, it does not um, seep through the soil but it flows on on this on the soil my bad uh, so it flows on the soil so it is moving on top of the soil, basically. It is not uh, being absorbed, okay? We will look at um, factors that affect um, infiltration and this process that we're talking about now. Now, what do we call this, okay? When water flows on the soil, but not into the soil, okay? So we call that surface runoff, okay? So we call that surface runoff. So these are basically um opposites of each other okay so either water flows into the soil or is absorbed by the soil or it flows on the soil okay so in this case it does not get absorbed or it just flows um um on the on the on, on the surface okay right so these are very, very important. And uh, we will, in the next video, we will look at the factors affecting um, this uh, infiltration and surface runoff. Okay, so what basically determines or what basically affects um, infiltration, what affects surface runoff, okay? This could come as a paragraph uh, question on your exams. So it's very important that we look at it.
Okay. Now let's look at other um, concepts. Let's just have uh, two two concepts. Um, now, of course, you have if water flows. Um, so if water flows into the surface or is absorbed by the surface or rather if it infiltrates okay of course it's going to collect um underground or under the soil okay so it will collect and it will form a, 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 some sort of a reservoir okay so it's basically so we, we then call that um groundwater okay so water this water particle at some point they will um collect okay and form okay a pool of water underground okay so we call that groundwater okay this is of course as the word uh, suggests um it is water underneath the earth surface so we call that ground water okay ground water okay now groundwater has an upper level okay um so so it has this level at the top okay underneath it is where you'll find groundwater okay so what do we call that level okay the level um, um above groundwater um so this is what we call the upper level of groundwater okay so this level we uh this is what we call the water table okay this is the upper um upper level of ground water okay we call that the water table okay right and so um there's another concept uh, last one that we have so water does not only flow vertically um, into the soil, but it also can flow laterally. Okay, so it can flow laterally, like it, like the river, uh, basically going sideways. Okay, so we then call that through flow. Okay, so we say that is through flow. This is the lateral flow of water in the soil. Okay, so we say that is through flow. Okay, right. Okay, so this should be a good foundation for um, geomorphology as if we are about to take on a journey. Uh, I'll be doing a series looking at geomorphology. You guys just let me know. Um, which other concepts or which other uh topics you want me to uh to you want me to 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 make it make easier for you or explain to you um and please let others know please um subscribe please like and comment on this channel thank you so much